Hi, my name's Viv Williams. Um, my job description is that I'm the Shared Care Plan Coordinator for the public health organisation um, called Well South for the Otago Southland area, and I'm based in Dunedin. Um, so I'm a, a registered nurse with critical care, palliative care, community experience and management. Um, I'm Australian, um, and I may or may not give myself away with a few of the, the, my words. Um, I have two grown-up children who are adults now, and it's just my little way of improving the gene pool here in, in New Zealand. So um, my presentation, um, what I was asked was to talk about the um, process of introducing care plans to the um, GP practices in Otago Southland. Um, so the outline of my program initially is um, a forum called the CLIC program, and that's an acronym for Client-Led Integrated Care. And the idea of it is that it supports patients with long-term conditions to manage their conditions in partnership with the um, healthcare providers. It replaced a program called Care Plus, uh, which had no way of measuring the improvement of patient outcomes. So the um, program essentially involves a, a CHAR, which is a comprehensive health assessment, where patients are given an hour consultation with a nurse and they answer a lot of questions about their understanding of their, their health, their um, um, diet, their alcohol consumption, um, their compliance with medication. Behind the scenes there's an algorithm that's worked out and then the patients are stratified into a level one, two or three. And connected to that stratification is a funding program. So in hindsight, I um, had learnt um, that there was um, an enormous amount of upheaval and change to the original day-to-day -day interactions between the healthcare professional and, and um, the patients. Um, I learnt once again later on that the staff were telling me that they were choking on an enormous piece of information pie. And um, it was my job to dislodge this large slice and deliver the changes in bite-sized pieces. I was, if you like, um, offering them a lifeline when things were starting to change. I didn't realise this at the time, though. So this is me, clearly. Um, um, I might say that when I was looking at images for my PowerPoint, I put up happy nurse images and I got all these pornographic X-rated sort of <laughs> videos, so I had to quickly bring the IT department and say, look, this was legitimate, um, and this is what I'm doing, and uh, so it was all fine. So this is the most savoury one I could find. So this is, um, I started in, in this job, I was incredibly enthusiastic um, and really innocent and quite naive, I have to say, um, but I thought that everybody would welcome me with open arms. Uh, my preparation for this was that I did an enormous amount of reading and on literature reviews on care plans, so the pros and cons of, of care plans. And as we both know that, as we all know that, you know, to have it um, centred uh, so that the patient has these goals themselves, they're much, much more compliant to, to be able to achieve their goals at the end. I also learnt the digital process inside out and back to front, so I really, really knew my, my stuff before I started. When I started, however, um, and looking back now, it wasn't at the time, I could see that there were quite a few um, theories that really mirrored what had happened while I was doing this change process. And there's a, a plethora of models out there, but the one I chose in the end was um, Tuckman's change model because it mirrored exactly what was happening to me. Um, and it's essentially um, the changes or interpersonal relationships that change when um, changes foisted on, on, on a community, on, on a group of people. So the four changes, four steps rather, were the forming, storming, norming and performing. So in this forming stage when I started, it was the introductory phase. Staff were really responsive, they were polite, they were pleasant, they were weighing me up a little bit because I was, I was new to Dunedin, but it was all very, very pleasant. That quickly changed. Uh, so then I hit the storming phase, and um, boy, this was a really, really difficult phase. But what I want the take-home message to be is that, you know, anybody who's in this situation, please literally weather the storm, because at the other end is, is the goals that you wish to achieve. Um, uh, staff were incredibly frustrated, they were angry, they were anxious, they were unfriendly, they were accusatory, a lot of closed body language, and I was to blame. I was the sole reason why all of this was happening. I remember reading some of Tuckman's um, 
uh, papers and uh, he had he'd been asked to visit uh, a practice once who had been in the storming phase for 15 years. This wasn't encouraging at all. Um, so the problems I identified at the time were that staff kept saying to me that they were too busy, they were too busy. This was a completely different way of doing things. It wasn't a tick box exercise and we had to um, kind of tease out information and they couldn't fit it into their day-to-day -day life. I mean, on top of this, they had their, especially during flu vax times and then the measles epidemic, it was really difficult. They had little understanding of the three care plans, which I assume that they had, and they found the process very, very clunky, especially when it came to the advanced care plan course. The doctors particularly were vocal about the acute plan and didn't understand the value in it at all. They felt it was a, a regurgitation of um, the medical history of a patient along with their, their medications, and it's not at all. It's very much to introduce any hindrances in communication when someone's in an acute state so that they can treat them more, more easily. So there are medical and um, social um, reasons for this. Um, so the, the medical ones are the, the logical ones. So say, for instance, someone's got um, COPD and their oxygen saturations sit on about 86 87%. When they're in an acute state, don't chase 100%. The, the 86% is their norm. If their blood pressure is notoriously low, don't chase a higher blood pressure. And that may be all you need on the acute plan. Something on a more um, personal level could be the gentleman who's experienced um, chest pain and uh, the ambulance people realise he's really reluctant to go to hospital because he's caring for his wife with um, early onset dementia. So in the acute plan, if you have a number of the neighbour, the daughter, the son, a friend who can sit with his wife while he's being treated and has been to go to hospital, that's gold. That, that's, then that's sometimes all you need in the acute plan. So one of the doctors there challenged me and said, OK, I've got a patient who um, has chronic pain and he's on a lot of medications, including very, very high doses of narcotics. Show me how this is going to work. So we put it in the care plan that this is what you know what um, medication he was on and the reason for it, and that you know it was all, all very legitimate. And that's all they had to put on the care plan. And sure enough, when the patient went to hospital the next time, he had a lot of long-term conditions. He was usually greeted with a lot of um, suspicion and treated as someone who was a drug seeker. After having this care plan things changed completely. He was treated much more respectfully, he was treated much more quickly, and he was able to be discharged and, and home after being treated. This gentleman today is so grateful, so grateful that this plan has been put in place and the doctor could see the benefit in it. Having said that, I was so hoping that the people in A&E in Dunedin did read the acute plan because they're not reading them all the time, so at this state they did. So I got it across the line there. So during this storming phase, um, I had made a lot of assumptions um, that uh, people knew what it was all about and that they were um, very keen to take it on board. Um, so the problems I identified is that, um, as I said, that, that staff were very task orientated. To have conversations and tease information out was often difficult. Um, they had a distinct lack of computer skills, and um, I can certainly identify with that. Um, one of my roles, or a distinct role, that I had um, started with this job was to do um, IT digital care plans. And my kids said to me, how did you get the job? Um, and I could honestly say, so if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, and this is something that I certainly bring back. So they weren't familiar with Health One, and they really found it difficult to be able to uh, navigate their way through that. There also was a lot of discomfort around communication skills in having those difficult conversations around advanced care planning as well. They um, didn't like it if people were um, angry about having it introduced or didn't know how to perpetuate the conversation there. So a really good example I've got of a personal care plan of a nurse that um, we did not get on well. She didn't like the care plan, she thought they were a waste of time, but she was the one that was designated to try and get the care plans across the uh, line. So she asked me to come and sit with her one day with a patient to do a, a personal care plan. And she was like this and had a face like thunder and said to um, the patient, so, you know, what are your goals? And the patient said, um, oh, my main goal is to get rid of this hair in my chin. And I could see the nurse just wince. And um, I sat there for a moment thinking, come on, please ask more questions. And she did. So she said, is that your only problem? And she said, that's it. She said, I know it's sitting there and I can't see it and I can't pluck it out. But she said, it's, it's, I can't even see the stove. I can't see the gadgets on the stove. So I'm not cooking anymore. And I'm tripping over my rug all the time and look at all the bruises on here and I'm getting really stiff. And she said, so I don't go out. I'm depressed. And I guess it's just me getting old. 
So the nurse took this on board and was able to put a whole lot of things in place. She um, first was able to get her a consult to have her eyes checked. And then, you know, she had an occupational therapist to come into her home and help make her home safer. She was put on an exercise program, Meals on Wheels were organised, and both of them felt so heard and um, were able to get things in place. So she is now the poster girl for, for personal care plans and really understands how, how it works, but was appreciated that the way patients perhaps say what their goals are are different from what we think they are. But if we can tease it out a little bit more, there's a lot of good that comes out of it. So during this storming phase, I very much felt that they were shooting the messenger. And often, you know, the messenger brings messages that are not good. But I was really trying to promote a good message. And I just wanted to have the time to be able to do that with them and that I was here to help them. So during this stage, I, one of the things I did do is that I didn't react. And there certainly were times where it wasn't pleasant at all. It was, it was teetering on being really quite abusive. But I didn't react and I, I managed to just to stay calm. Quite a few tears were shed behind the scene, but they didn't see any of it. So um, during these times, I really made a distinct effort to empathise and be receptive about their complaints. And I could see that they were busy. And, and one of the gentlemen spoke this morning about staffing. They, they, they don't have enough staff. And then to do this as well, that takes a little bit longer and it's a new concept. It's really, really hard. The other thing that I worked very hard to establish was to have good relationships so that there was an atmosphere of trust and dependability. And I have to say, this is the part that I really enjoyed the most. So while we were waiting for patients to come and I was talking with the, with the staff, we'd talk about you know, things about their family and their friends and that sort of thing. And um, I can tell you right now that I've got a list as long as your arm for really reputable electricians and plumbers and, you know, um, uh, places to visit if I want to go travelling, and I've even been invited to a wedding. So I'm um, starting to get a relationship with people that is just more than that, the care plans. And the interesting thing is that from that, um, the complaints and the frustrations are still there, but the sting in the tail is no longer there. So we are able to speak much more openly about what the problems are and hence move on a little bit more. So I also then increased the calibre of, informa of information that I had so that there was more references to when they, they started these care plans that they could then go on with them. And, and it was a laminated step-by-step -step guide that I had created and, and were bringing into practices. So in this norming stage, I was just starting to see that they, they were starting to do care plans, and, um, but they were all doing it from their own, own end. So that, that first cartoon there is that they were attempting it, but they were all trying to go against each other. So once again, I congratulated them on starting the care plans, but it was probably more wise to have a champion within the practice who could do the care plans initially and then educate others about how to do it. And that way you were all moving in the same direction and it was much, you'd get much more momentum there. And also reiterate that the first year is really difficult. Once you've started the care plans, then you can move on from there and the next years are much, much easier after that. So in the performing stage, um, I say that the sun is going up here, it's not going down. Um, there are glimpses of this being the normal practice, that they are able to incorporate it into their day-to-day -day life and that they can add care plans or plant the seeds of advanced care plans while they're having appointments for different things. Um, so what I did from here on is that I increased my collegial support. Um, the um, staff that I work with in Well South are, are really supportive and could see that I were having difficulties and were able to put a lot of their jobs aside to help perpetuate the, the care plan talk. So they were able to help out in places like Alexandra and Invercargill where they were based, but also here in Dunedin. Um, I also um, give a, an advanced care plan course, which is a, a full day course. And at the end of that, I've added those, those laminated steps, which were really helpful. So people went there and really enjoyed the fact that they learned more about the legalities and, and the um, conversations and how to, to write the care plans, but they weren't still versed on how to do the digital process, so I was able to finish that off as well. So what worked well? The things that worked well were clearly that the relationships that were developed, and that was something that I probably needed to do much earlier in the piece. And being the main contact person for care plans, um, there are a lot of Well South people who visit the practices, and I think a lot of the practices wonder who the heck to, to contact. So sometimes it wasn't my my area that they needed, but I was able to forward that on, and I think they found that really helpful. 
what didn't work so well. Initially, the resources on Health Navigator weren't clear, but only because they didn't have the background to the care plans. Now that they do, it's a much more useful resource. Another really important resource out there is the SMS um, toolkit that, that um, Pam's promoting, and it's, it's outside for everybody to see, and that's full of lots of fantastic information. Um, also, we introduced way too many changes at once. Um, and it would have been much easier to just have um, perhaps one care plan at a time, embed that, and then move on to the next one. So the conclusions that I feel um, are that we, and I'm, I'm in the throes of doing that, is uh, producing a video of myself and a mock patient going through care plan. So another resource that's, that's useful for people to have. That laminated step-by-step -step guide, I should have introduced that much earlier, um, to teach one care plan at a time and have much more collegial support early on in the piece so that the word could have been spread more easily because I, at the time I was responsible for 84 practices, just one person, and, and it just wasn't, wasn't logistically possible. Um, so that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Um, has anybody got any questions? <laughs>